How about fly human and do you want to pay 180 euros for a knockoff chieftain? Well, this is your day. Today, we're going to talk about the STRVK that is in crates in the shop. Each crate does cost $5.99, adds up to 180 euros over the total of 30 charms that is necessary to pick up the vehicle. So, not a good price. Now, the stats on this vehicle, it does look pretty good at first. 3,400 DPM, only 350 alpha damage. It is a heavy tank, though. Uh, 0.28 accuracy, which is really good. 9 degrees of gun depression. 18 power to weight ratio on the fully upgraded version, obviously. So, what happens when you combine a Kranwagen hull with a Centurion turret? Well, you get no turret armor around the outside of the gun mantlet. The gun mantlet's also pinnable at places, so that's great. 250mm here, so pretty much any tier 10 can go straight through the turret here, unless you keep moving back and forth very quickly. And the hull's not really that good either, so basically you take the not-great Kranwagen hull and place one of the worst armored medium turrets on top of it which is truly great for its performance now can you side scrape with it well don't really even bother because this plate does stick out quite a bit so you will be able to be pinned even if you're in a side scraping position so that's not going to work the side armor is very flat and it's only 70 millimeters so you will be pinned pretty much all the time nope it does have a cupola but you don't have to worry about it because they're going to just pin you through the turret anyway so overall the armor is not really great. Is it badly priced? Well, of course it is. It's in crates. Why are they reselling tier 10s in crates now? Because they're incredibly profitable and because they don't care about you. Very simple. So, don't bother with that. Because if they sell it for 20k gold, they're going to make a lot less profit. That's why. Very simple. So, essentially, what we have here is we have a vehicle that some people do consider OP. Now, I consider those people the opposite of OP, but nonetheless. The thing is, with this vehicle, is that it's good at peekabooing while sucking at peekabooing. Right, you have the gun for it, you have the DPM, you have essentially the gun to do that, but you don't have the hull to do that, you don't have the armor to do that. Let's say we, we have a Leopard 1 or an E50M or even, let's say, an STB-1 that are extremely mobile. Vehicles that can peak very quickly, pull back again, and do it again very swiftly. The problem is this vehicle can't do that because it's too slow. So you can't essentially peak a boot too fast, so you have to play a bit slower. Playing very slowly with bad alpha damage is not good. Because what you essentially have is you have to expose yourself a lot. And with this tank and this tank's Centurion armor, you're gonna get pent. Pretty much any situation, which isn't really that favorable. Now, keep in mind though, if you are a good player, then yes, you will be able to make great use of this vehicle because it does perform quite well if you know what you're doing. And I do know what I'm doing, sometimes. Well, you'll see that also in the next game that happened before this one, because time. So, essentially, what we have is a tank. That's good. But it's sold crappily. Which is kind of Wargaming's tagline these days. But now, let's see. 268. Get rid of that. Beautiful. Now the enemy only have four vehicles left. But overall, there's nothing OP about this vehicle, essentially. It's just, it sucks that's what it's supposed to be good at, and then it's good at what it's supposed to be sucking at. You know, it's a heavy tank with high DPM, low alpha damage. Does it make sense? Well, no. Should it be like that? Not great, because you can't really trade with other heavies, and you can fight medium tanks. That's one of the advantages this vehicle does have, is that you can very much keep up or even out DPM some medium tanks, while I'm not really retaining more armor, but by gi giving up mobility and retaining Centurion level of armor, which is, it might bounce sometimes. And now, here we go. Isn't that beautiful? 3.5k. It does rack up damage pretty quickly if you are left alone. That's the beauty of this tank. Like, it can get damage done incredibly fast if it's left alone. It's got the 9 degrees of gun depression. So it is, say, say more flexible than a similar high DPM tier 10, like a 113 or 11.3, as I should call it randomly. Um, so essentially it does have that advantage. Problem is obviously the 11.3 does have higher DPM 
at higher alpha damage. And that, that kind of does negate that a bit. And now the TVP is going to run away, which we're going to skip. So for fairness sake, we're going to assume that this vehicle costs 20k gold, right? In the shop. It doesn't, but let's assume it does. Because then we can have an accurate review. Because here's the thing. Reviewing just on the stats alone is essentially, mainly for a premium tank, utterly worthless. Because, I mean... What's the point of paying triple for the same performance? There's no reason to do that. So, it's like buying a brand new car instead of buying a three-year-old used one. The three-year-old used one has the exact same performance, but it, the new one costs like seven times as much because the market. Nonetheless, this vehicle is like that. It's like a, a new car that doesn't have any more noticeable features or any improvements than the old model, in this case the Chieftain, but it costs triple, because, I don't know. And also maybe the heated seats are locked behind a subscription, that's maybe the next thing that the HE ammunition is subscription only. I think that's a, a great idea to never do. But nonetheless, let's assume it has a cost of 20k gold, to be fair. To the view. If we do that, if we normalize it to 20k gold, I'm like, it is a tank that can certainly be worth picking up, especially if you are an experienced player. If you are a medium tank player that wants to try something a bit slower, but not give up your incredibly high DPM and lower alpha damage. So this is the blend between medium and heavy. It's not really a heavium, because it's more medium than heavy, so it's more of a mevy, really. Um, so if, if you are in the market to buy a Mevi, then here you are. But not for the current price, obviously, because buying crates is about the second dumbest thing a human can do. If you want to know the, the first one, let's get this video to two likes. And I'll tell you in the shop review on Friday. <laughs> now what I want to do here is not have the E100 shoot my ass, because that's not really healthy. 1,000 HE damage. Not great. I'm gonna go forward here, attack the T30, and send it. I have higher DPM. The T30 is a very good tank, but I can just go forward. 4k damage. What I gotta watch out for, though, is the grill right over there. And those are the kind of things. If you know how to position your vehicle, if you know how to get lucky as well, which I also made a video about that I recommend checking out, like now, then you'll have a plenty old grand time. So, to sum it up once again, if it were sold for a reasonable price, it were a reasonable pickup because it is a decent tank. It is by no means OP, but it is solid. So that said, don't buy it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you in the next one. Goodbye.